Hey what's up guys, in this video I'll be taking you through some of the Sublime Text tips, tricks and best features that I use. Sublime Text is a powerful and configurable text editor and this video seeks to outline some of its best features. Knowing these features will help you become more efficient and therefore save precious time when you're working with the editor. The first tip that I'm going to show you is multiple inline cursors. Sublime Text allows you to put your cursor on multiple positions in the same line and then proceed from there. So let's just go to Sublime Text where I have the following text. Mary had a lamp, a lamp, lamp. I realized that I'm missing the word little. To insert it at three points, here, here, and here, put your cursor on the first point, here, and then press Ctrl and hold, and then click on the other spots that you want to edit. So I want it here and then here. As you can see, I now have three cursors. Then I'll just type little, and it types on the three places and then press space. Now I have Mary had a little lamp, a little lamp, little lamp. Just a note here, this recording is done on a Windows PC, so I'll be using the control key. If you're on a Mac, use the command key, unless I specifically tell you otherwise. Now let's move on to the second tip, which is modifying selections. Now let's say I want to change the word lamp to cat. All I have to do is select the first one and sublime text will automatically select the other occurrences of the word. To change it, I can just hold control, select these guys, and then just type cat. This works, but there's a better way. So let me just go back to what it was. Just use control Z for that. And then all I have to do is I don't even have to select the first occurrence. All I have to do is just put my cursor on the first word. And then if I press control D, it will highlight all the other occurrences. And then if I press control D again, it selects the second occurrence. And then control D again, it selects the third occurrence. And then I can just type cat to change it. So this is just changing occurrences with the use of a keyboard 100%. You don't need to have the mouse, you don't need to select, you don't need to highlight all the occurrences. You can just do it straight from your keyboard. Obviously, I could have done the same thing with find and replace, but I believe this gives you more control for exactly what occurrence to change. The third tip I'm going to share with you is the multi-line cursor. This is a cursor that spans more than one line. For instance, given the names shown here of some big tech companies, Alphabet, Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, Intel. Please note, this is by no means a ranking. If I wanted to add is a big tech company in front of each, I could simply write it once. Is a big tech company and then copy it and then paste it in front of each like this. but there's a better way to do this. So what you need to do is make sure that the case is where you want. In this instance, I want it at the end of the first line. Press and hold control and then click all the other places that you want. As you can see, I now have the case in five lines, one through five. And then I can just type once, is a big tech company. And then it will be added onto all the places where my case was. If I wanted to modify parts of my list, such as setting alphabet, and Microsoft to is a very big tech company instead of just is a big tech company, I would use Control D and Control K. Please note these are four separate keystrokes, Control D and then Control K. So you have to let go of the Control button. You can't just hold it and say Control D plus K. To demonstrate, I'll just put my case on big. I'm gonna use Control D to select big on Alphabet as well as on Microsoft and use Control D and Control K to deselect it on Apple and Facebook. When you press Ctrl D and Ctrl K, it has to be in quick succession. And you might not see it immediately, but when you move on to the next occurrence, then you see that the previous occurrence is deselected. So Ctrl D to select on alphabet, Ctrl D, Ctrl K, and then Ctrl D. As you can see, I didn't select it on Apple and Facebook. Now I can just go back here and then type very. So as you can see, I've now changed alphabet and Microsoft to read is a very big tech company instead of just is a big tech company and I've skipped the occurrences on Apple and Facebook. Now let's move on to line manipulation. Here I'm going to show you how to combine lines, how to select an entire line, how to delete or cut an entire line, how to move an entire line, how to duplicate a line and lastly how to go to a specific line number. So let's go back to Sublime Text. With Sublime Text open, I'm going to show you how you can combine multiple lines into one line. As you can see, I've got 10 lines. If I wanted all of them to be one line, I could cut and paste like this. 
and then continue and continue until I have one line. But I've got a better way. And the better way is simply, you put your cursor where you want to join the lines and then press Control J. It will then just do that. Keep on pressing Control J and then it will put all the lines in one line. So this is how you can combine multiple lines into one line in Sublime Text. Next up is selecting an entire line. You can select an entire line by pressing Control L and then it selects the entire line. You can then either press delete or then just type what you want and then it will overwrite that selection. Let me just go back to the multiple lines and you'll see what it is like, right? So I'm on line one. If I want to select line one, I just press Control L and then it will select line one and put the cursor on the next line. If I want my cursor to go back on the first line, but still select the first line, I just hold shift and then back. As you can see, I'm still selecting the first line and now my cursor is now at the end of the first line. The next sublime text tip I'm going to show you is how to delete or cut an entire line. To delete or cut an entire line, you just use Control X. So for instance, if I want to delete line three, all I have to do is put the cursor anywhere on line three. So I can put it here, here, or here, it doesn't matter. Once it's on the line that I want to delete, I just press Control X and it deletes the line. As you can see, we no longer have line three. So it's now saying this is line one, this is line two, this is line four, this is line three has been deleted. Let's move on to the next tip, which is how to move a line in sublime text. Suppose I want to move this is line one to the bottom of the list. Obviously you could just cut it and then paste it at the bottom, but there's a better way to do it. And you do it by pressing Control and Shift and then the up and down arrow, depending on whether you want to move the line up or down. In this instance, I want to move it down. So I press Control Shift and then press my down arrow. As you can see, I've moved this is line one to the bottom. This shortcut is not limited to one line. You can select multiple lines that you want to move up or down. Let me fix my order. So I want this is line one to be at the top. So what I'll do is just simply select using my shift key or the other lines except the one that says this is line one. And then I'll press control shift down. As you can see, I've moved the other eight lines to be under the line which says this is line one. If you're using a Mac computer, the keyboard shortcut is not control shift up or down, but it is command plus control up or down. The next tip that I'm gonna show you in Sublime Text is how to duplicate a line. Though being dry, that is, do not repeat yourself is a very good software practice. You may have a situation where you want to duplicate a line or lines of text when working on a project. In our case, for instance, you can see that I'm missing the line that says, this is line two. So what you can do is put your cursor on the line that you want to duplicate and then press control shift D. It will duplicate the line and then just go to the end and change one to two. This is how you can duplicate a line. You are not limited to only duplicating one line. You can select multiple lines and then duplicate them. For example, I'm gonna select line four and five. When you duplicate, the duplication puts the information where your cursor is. So my cursor is on line six. So when I press Control Shift D, it will put the information starting from line six. As you can see, I've duplicated this is line four and this is line five. Last but not least on line manipulation, I'm going to show you how you can go to a line number. So back on our file here, I want to delete the duplications that I did in the last section. So what I simply do is press Control G. It gives you that text box where you can write in your line number. So the line number that I want is six because that's where the duplication was put. After I put in six, I press enter and then it puts the case on line six. We use Control L to select the line, Control L to select the line. And then here you can press backspace or delete to delete the duplications. So this is how you can jump to a particular line number. The next tip that I'm gonna show you is how you can indent or de-indent lines of text in Sublime Text. So let's just go back to Sublime Text. So suppose I want to indent, this is line one, this is line two, and this is line three. What you simply do is select the lines and then once you select the lines, you press Control and the right bracket. It indents it to the right. If I want to de-indent it, it's Control and the left bracket. You can also indent one line. Just make sure that the cursor is on the line that you want to indent. For example, I want to indent this line saying, this is line five, it's Control, right bracket. If I press it again, it then moves it to the right. If I want to de-indent it, I can then press Control, left bracket, Control, left bracket, or I can just press Control Z to undo. Next up, I want to show you how you can select the entire contents of parentheses, brackets, or braces. Let's just go back to Sublime Text, where I have the following line open. So if I wanted to select the items within the square brackets, all I have to do is put the cursor within the brackets 
or at the end of the line. So you can put your cursor here or at the end of the line and then press Ctrl Shift M. As you can see, it has just selected the items within the brackets. Next thing that I want to show you is file manipulation. Here, I'll show you how you can jump to any file as well as how you can search any file in Sublime Text. So let's just switch to Sublime Text. Sublime Text allows you to open projects. For instance, I'm going to open a project called File Manipulation, which has three HTML files, namely index, pricing, and contact us. So just go to File and then open Folder. A folder is the same as a project. It's already selected File Manipulation. So I just click on Select Folder and then it opens there on the left hand side. As you can see, my project file manipulation has got the three HTML files that I mentioned. So I'm gonna open the file called index. As you can see here, I'm on the file called index. If you hover over the name, you can see the location on my machine. But let's suppose from this index file, I wanted to open pricing. Yes, I can just double click it here, but if you've got a lot of files and don't want to scroll, all you have to do is press Ctrl P and then type pricing. And then it will filter all the files in your project and then you can just click enter and then it's opened pricing and pricing has got focus. It is important to know that Ctrl P only works with files open in your workspace. So you can only see the files that are currently open. For example here, my project is file manipulation. That is the project that is open. So I can only see three files. You cannot open a file that is not currently in your workspace. Next, under file manipulation, I want to show you the search all files functionality. This allows you to search all the files in your workspace. To search the files, just press Ctrl Shift F and then it will give you that pop-up where you type your search term. So I want to search for index, just type in index and then press enter. It will give you a tab with the find results. As you can see, it says searching three files for index. And if you look at the sidebar, I only have three files in my workspace. At the bottom, it tells you that it's got X number of matches in X number of files. In our instance, it has got two matches in one file. And to go to that file, all you have to do is double click on one of the meshed terms. So for example, I can double click here on line four index or on line seven index. I'm gonna double click on this one to go to the index page. As you can see, I've gone to the index page on line seven because that's the one that I selected. That is all for file manipulation. Last but not least, I'm going to show you multi column layout. Sometimes you want to see more than one file at a time and to do that in sublime text, you just press out shift and the number of columns that you want. This project file manipulation has got three files, so I want to see them side by side. So I need three columns. So what I do is press Alt Shift and the number three. As you can see, it has created for me two extra columns so that I have three columns. To open the other two files in the three columns, all I have to do is select a column. For example, this column is the one with focus. So if I click on index.html, which is not open, it will be opened in this column. To open contact us.html in the middle column, all I have to do is to give the middle column focus. So just select it and then double click on contact us. As you can see, it has been opened in the middle column. If you don't select the column that you want, it will just open the file in the column that is selected. So for example, if I were to close it here and then give the first column focus, and then if I open contact us.html, you can see it's opened in this column. It's not opened in the middle column. So you have to select the column that you want the file to be opened in before you click on the file. So these are my tips, tricks, and shortcuts for Sublime Text. I hope you found them useful and that they will save you a lot of time. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch you in the next one.